Hello everyone, my name's Lost, and today we are going to be talking about splitting things in half. Specifically, sprites and how you can create this effect. You know, the, uh, the typical samurai slices you in two type deal. So, let's get started. So, first things first, we need to create a new sprite. Don't, don't worry about the sprite I've, I've already got there. That's We're going to split a character in half later on. But anyway, just call it sprite block. You can The size can be whatever you want it to be, I'm just going with 100 by 100 and I'm just going to fill this colour, whatever this is. As I say every video, <laughs> I'm colour blind. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, now the origin has to be in the very centre of the object to the, for this to work. If the origin is anywhere else, like for, for whatever reason, if, if you're not going to centre the origin on your character, you're going to have to get fancy with maths and try and figure it out. So next up, we need to create an object. We're going to call this Object Split. And this is going to what this is going to be what we click on to make it split, and you can just assign that to the sprite that you want. Um, we're going to have a create event, but you don't have to do this because this is just for me for when I um, use the character instead, just to set the image speed. And also, I've made the text bigger for this one. Hopefully, this is big enough for you guys. Let me know if it's not. And we're going to need a step event. Now, in the step event, this is where the action happens. This is where we split things in half. So first off, we're going to say if mouse check pressed. Uh, button press, sorry, so if we click the left mouse button, we're going to split it in half sideways. Um, we're going to have both sideways and top and bottom. So we need to check if the mouse is on top of the object. And we're going to create vars. Now when you um, specify var like that, what this does is it means that it doesn't keep this variable around. It will use it for while the code runs, it will use it once while the code runs and then it will forget the variable. Um, so you don't actually have to create this in the create event. The, you don't have to declare the variable. I mean, you can just do it like var left half. So anyway, what we're doing here, we're saying instance create. Now, as you can see, at the x and y position, we're doing x minus sprite width divide 2 and the same for the y. That is because when you um, create this, the object that we're going to create here is not going to be the half the sprite itself. It's going to draw half the sprite in its place. Now the problem with that is when you use the draw code, when you're, when you're drawing something, it doesn't take into account the origin. That, that's purely for when you have an object. So as far as the draw event's concerned, the X is the top left of the image. Right, the the origin. I mean, it's, it's when you're drawing instead of creating an object. So, we need to just um, offset it to make sure it's in the right position, and that that's what that does there. That could, and we haven't created object part yet, but that's we're going to do that shortly. And now we're just going to do the same thing for the right half. There's one minor change though. Uh, yeah, just rename it right half, and that is we need to get rid of. Uh, let's see, yeah, the sprite width for this one because this one is just in the right place like that. Now we say with, this allows us to control the object that we've just specified and we're gonna assign it some variables. So first we're gonna make sure that the sprite is object split sprite, so object split dot sprite index. Sub image will do the exact same. Uh, sub image doesn't matter if you don't have um, something that moves uh, but obviously I'm going to use the character later on, so that's important for me. Now the left and top, so we're going to chop it from top left. So 0, 0, it's the top left of the sprite. The width, we're going to divide 2, and that's how far we're going to split. And we're going to do the full height. So if you imagine the top is 0, and the bottom is the full length of the sprite, when you say sprite height like that, you are going essentially the full length of the sprite. It will just get those numbers for you. Now direction, the direction is going to determine which way we split. So this is going to be the left piece, obviously, and that's going to be number one. And now you just have to do the same for the right half. With just a couple of changes. The first being, we now need to take it from uh, the middle of the sprite. So you do that by saying this object split dot sprite with divide 2 and 
make the direction 2. And the reason we keep the width the same, so we're saying the width is still sprite width divide 2. So when we start at the left point, which is again sprite width divide 2, the width de determines how far it, it continues, right? You're not, you're not specifying an individual pixel where to stop. So you're not saying, you know, you can do from 5 to 10. You're saying you're going to grab the the, op, the sprite width divide 2 again, which just happens to be the rest of the image, the rest of the sprite, if it's censored, of course. If not, like I said earlier, you're going to have to get fancy with maths and stuff like that to try and work it out. But yeah, direction 2 will be right. And now we're going to do the exact same thing, but um, for the right click. So there we go, we've got the exact same code, and now we're just going to rename the variables to top half and bottom half. So now we're going to just edit this code a little bit, uh, specifically where we then create the object particle, or object path, sorry. And we also need to edit where we, so, so the, we need to edit the left and top and the width and height and where we grab it from and stuff like that. So first, in order to make top and bottom correct, you have to edit it like this. So you have to say, for the bottom one, x minus sprite, uh, sprite width divide 2. That just puts it in the right spot. And the y is just y. I guess it's just kind of opposite to the left and right. So this time, we want the yeah height divide 2. And that is my phone. That was professional. Uh, yeah, and we're just going to edit it like this, because this is going to grab the correct points of the sprite. Yeah, and obviously we need to change the direction, which I think I do now. Good, I remember. And yeah, we'll say 3 is up and 4 is down. And yeah, make sure that you just rename these two with top half and bottom half. Right then, now this will be the final bit. We need to create object part. Now let's sort out what happens here. So we're going to need a create event, and this is going to store the variables. Now I suppose you don't actually have to have to designate the variables here since we did that in the object split, if you remember. But I just like to. Um, it's just good practice, really, so that you don't you don't ever mess this up for an object that requires it. So yeah, just make them all equal zero in here because when we set them in object split, it will overwrite these in here. And we're going to need an alpha because we're going to make it disappear. And we need a left slow equal zero and all the directions. This is just this is how we're going to move it and slow it down because it's going to move really quick and then slow right down. Just it just gives it a kind of a cool effect and it looks nice. And now we need a draw then. And this is where we're going to move the sprite. So if direction is 1, so if we're moving to the left, then we will do this. We'll say if h speed is less than 0, then left slow plus equal 2. And this will make sense in a moment. Now we're going to set the h speed to minus 20. That means it's going to move to the left. And we're going to plus the left sl slow. So ultimately, we're, h speed will become 0 and it will stop. That's what we're looking for, and all the while it's it's sort of stopping like that. It's going to fade out as well. Again, just looks cool. So now we need to say draw sprite general, and we're just going to fill out all of these. Now, thankfully, we've already specified everything, and it is important that you put one minus alpha here because that's how it's going to fade out. And yeah, we're just going to do that for all of the different directions. Only this time we have to say if h speed is bigger than zero because we have to take it away because uh, h speed is going to be a positive number this time. So we're going to say right slow plus equals two so that the number gets higher, and then we're going to say h speed equals twenty, but this time we'll minus right slow. And this time we need to use v speed because it's going to move up and down. Oh, this one's going to move up rather. And 
Now, in theory, you could have just used you, we could have just used one variable like up slow. We could have used that for all of them, but I wanted to keep it separate like this. So remember, minus means you move up. So plus up slow, and there we go. And now we just need to do down. So let's just edit this a little bit to make it right. So this needs to be if it's more, if it's bigger than zero, it needs to be down slow. We need to get rid of the minus sign there and do it there and create down slow and there we go let's put it in the room and see what happens it's not quite finished yet um, but let's just see the effect so far and what we've got there we go but as you can see it doesn't fade out and we still need to destroy the object as well or it's just going to stay there and the way that you do that is you go back into object split and you just have to do it down here and after it's run all the code, it will destroy itself and disappear. And we need to do the same thing at the bottom of the right click, like this. Perfect. Now let's just have a quick look again, make sure that works. And yeah, there we go. Now let's make it fade out. So back to object part. And we need to say alpha. Now I've just chose 0 0.035 just because it, it's, it gives a nice effect. You can play with that. And now I'm just putting this code here because this just means it will destroy the object if it leaves the room, which it shouldn't, but again, just, just in case, I'm going to do this. And now we're just going to say elf, if alpha gets to zero or less than zero, we will also destroy the object. And... There you go. This is how we create the effect in its total. So now let's just test it and then I'll um, show you what it looks like when you've got a character that splits in half. So yeah, there you go. That's a pretty cool effect. I think it works quite well. Uh, so yeah, let's just test this with the character sprite. That's actually moving. And yeah, just making sure it's centered, which it is. Perfect. And let's give it a go. So yeah, there we go, that looks pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to stop there, guys. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.